here's my three favorite tools. The tow doctor, the power probe, and this little doodad you shove in and the LEDs light up and tell you if anything's going. The power probe is great for giving power and ground. You can push the button and give it power or ground. A lot of times ground is the issue. That'll tell you right away. Let's hook these up and give them a try. Start by hooking this guy up. We got left turn, tail markers, right turn, 12 volt, brakes, and backup. The brakes are, uh, the trailer brakes registering that the brakes are alive. Just turn the tail lights on. I can see the tail light, the top one's glowing real nice. Hopefully you can see that in there. Let's see if I can get you in a little closer. That's the tail light, that top one. Right blinker. Saying there isn't the left turn. Shift it in reverse and the backup comes on. Well, it said we had everything except one of the blinkers. Something to remember about this, the LEDs aren't going to draw much of a load, so it's possible these would light up, but your tail lights would not. So remember the load issue. But pretty slick little device. This is underneath the truck. This is the back side of the trailer light receptacle. Most GMs come pre-wired for trailer lights. You just have to buy this adapter right here. You'll have this plug pre-wired and you buy this side and this side plugs right in and then you have trailer lights. I've had to replace these before because I can't get power out here to the very end. A lot of these vehicles have an independent trailer signal from the truck signal. If you blow a fuse on the trailer, it won't affect the truck. Let's take a look here. Number four, trailer stop, left turn, 10 amp. Number four, right up there, top right. It's that top 10 on the right. Let's see if we can get it all on. There. So we're picking up the flashing signal. Let's try this other side. And nothing. Bet you that fuse is bad. Let's take a look. Old fingernails are good for something. Can we see anything? Can you tell? There you can see it. Let's give the tester a try and see if we have the left turn. Left turn. Let's hook up the tow doctor now. We have an onboard battery, so life is easy. Now we can run everything, independent of the truck. Down here at the bottom, we got a power light. And of course, if you were too low on 12 volts, that would light up. The auxiliary power, we're reading error. And on, both are lit up for some reasons. The electric brake, the trailer brake, comes on, no error, so the brake should be locked now. Backup lights, on and error. The error means nothing's being used. There's no, no current being drawn. It thinks there's an open because nothing's hooked up to the backup. Tail lights on. And then we look up here to see how many LEDs are lit up. Only the first one's lit up. These are LED tail lights, so they're not going to draw hardly any. This will fool you too. The LEDs won't draw enough current, and you'll think you'll have. An error, the error light will come on. 
but it's because you have LEDs on the trailer. Shut the tails off. Now let's go over here. Here's the switch we just replaced. So it says right turn is on. It's so low on the power usage, nothing's lit up. And the air light is on. When we go to left turn, same thing. So let's go back and take a look. So left is partially illuminated. Let's try the power probe now. Take our light out. Take the grommet out. We'll unplug it. It has a high note for the power and a low note for the ground. That's the high, that's the low. So we have power, we have ground. That's the low note, that's the high note. Not pushing the button, you don't push the button to test. Low, high. So if we got it and this isn't working, well, let's try a different one. There's the problem. All it was was a bad LED marker. Let me show you what I found. Show you what I found down in here. That was the ground screw. Hmm. Hitting the washer. And then holding the wire connector down. It's way deep down in here. Right there. Steady power. Steady ground. Look at that. Let's try one more test on these LEDs. That's the left brake blinker. You see all five of those lighting up. They all should be lighting up. But here's what we're going to see. Tail lights. Same five LEDs. You can barely see the three right ones. But it's the same five LEDs, and that's the tail lights. So there you go. There's your brakes, blinkers. You can see which five it is. And tail lights, same five. So that whole assembly is no good. Well, I found us some parts. This was Napa's cheapest LED tail light. It was 20 bucks. I think it's an off brand. The Napa brand was way more. And that's the account price, not the list price. Here we got the Amazon special, a bunch of LED side markers, reds and yellows, and another Amazon special, two LED tail lights for 18 bucks, I believe. So you can get two cheap ones for under 20, or you get one cheap one for 20. Can't really tell you how long they're gonna last. I'm not sure on the quality. We're gonna check it out though and see what we got. Can't find any cracks, nothing. But these things do crack, they do get water in them. One of them had a tiny bit of condensation that I thought I could see, but I wasn't real sure. Here's what comes in the kit. All eight of them. Same thing. It says made in Taiwan. Looks identical. Only thing I can't find is the part number to match this guy, but I think it's the identical manufacturer. It comes with some dielectric grease. 
for quite cheap. I think they were four bucks a light. Napa wanted like ten dollars a light for these little guys. This many running lights are on here. That's quite a bit of money. We use the tow doctor to energize the tail lights and we'll go through and slap on a new light for anything not lighting up. When I was prying on this one it was lighting up for me but now it's not. Take a close look. You can still see it has the tape. They never took the tape off when they did this light. Corrosion. There's our favorite green stuff. That's probably traveled on inside. This is no good. Real nice of them to leave the tape on. Here's what we ended up replacing. Six markers and two tails. That would have been 20, 40, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. So that's what it would have cost me at Napa. We'll hit the tails. We're on, no errors, and we're running one bulb. So not a lot of power for the LEDs. Tails off. Here's just an example. Left brake on, no air, one bulb. What I did is I put a regular one in there, a regular bulb, not an LED. The LED won't draw enough current to say no air. So you have to try it with a regular one to get it, the air to go away. Left, on, no air, one LED for one amp. Hit it to the right. On error, no amperage indication, but the LED is illuminated. There's just not enough current going through to illuminate everything, and it's reading an error. That's why we did the incandescent trick. So now it's working with no error. There's appropriate current to tell you. Not enough current. Just something to know on the tow doctor. Well, we know the obvious power feature, the power probe. That one's well known, but how about the ground feature? We got a little test light set up right here. We're hooked up to power. If we find good ground, the light will light up. Let's say we find bad ground somewhere. That's a decent ground. There's a bad ground. We can now substitute the ground and find out the light works by substituting the ground. The ground feature is great for lights that utilize a chassis ground screw. For example, right here, we could apply the ground to right there to confirm that we are grounding out this harness to the light. You can still always check the harness for power and ground. Power, and then no ground here because we're not getting ground up here. If we find a better ground, we'll get a ground reading. Ground, power, with a working light. But for those lights that utilize a chassis ground, this makes it kind of slick. You can go around and confirm all your grounds. Real quick way to determine if it's a ground issue when you're grounded to the chassis. Well here we are back in the fun factory. The tow doctor gets a switch replaced. Had to get a new switch online. Digi key seemed to be pretty good. Real nice packing list. Switches came uniquely packaged. Here's our new switch. On, off, on. Left turn, right turn. That's this guy right here. It is soldered on. So we'll use the solder sucker and see if we can remove it.
like a loose tooth. It's almost out. There she is. There's the old switch. Came out pretty nice. Right there is where it came out of. Looks pretty clean, pretty sanitary. Old switch, new switch. New switch is a little taller. We might cut that down a little. That's probably what happened is this got pounded in and that's why the switch broke. You can use solder wick. You don't have to use the solder sucker. And you can heat push it out too. You don't even have to really remove the solder. If you have the heat, you can usually push it right through. We use a little bit of silver solder. Touch it back in there. See if I can get you in there a little better. Warming up. We're melting. Add into the puddle. Melting. Add into the puddle. Add into the puddle. What do you think? <laughs>